The liberal hive mind truly is a spectacle, a glimpse into everything that's twisted about the modern society we share. It wasn't so long ago that one of the faces of liberal lunacy, Christian Freeland, referred to those who are on the right as cold, cruel, and small. And yet, this weekend, we got to bear witness to some remarkably cold, cruel, and small behavior on the part of liberal supporters who put their hypocrisy on full display. We're about to dive into that, but first, a quick message about the dangers of censorship faced by by the right. The liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit threeoceans.ca. Once again, that's threeoceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government. This weekend, the liberal shills on social media leveled their guns at our now beloved red shirt guy, the man who put Justin Trudeau to shame during his recent visit to Sault Ste. Marie. I guess what truly has these liberals in a tizzy is the fact that red shirt guy dismantled Trudeau without resorting to cheap insults and name calling. There was no aggression and the man's tone remained calm and respectful at all times. In the event you missed this whole situation, I've added the original video in which we cover the exchange between Red Shirt Guy and the Prime Minister at the end of this video. So let's take a look at some of the tweets coming from the Liberal NDP bot army. Jenny Lee, she says, This guy makes me wish people had to pass a civics exam before being allowed to vote. In the dumbest timeline, ding-dongs abound. Well, Jenny, I'm sorry to announce this cuts both ways. You spoke like a true career housewife, one that relies entirely on her husband to cover her bills until the day comes where maybe you can't. As a person who doesn't have any responsibilities, she couldn't possibly relate to someone who has to juggle several responsibilities. And then we have one of my personal favorite liberal shills here on X, and that would be Larry Dallas. Coming face to face with the uneducated Pierre Polyev voter, Trudeau knows no matter what he says, the man is brainwashed and lost. This is the face of disbelief of what he is hearing. The liberals must get better at comms. They must. And this, of course, is based on the previous comment that he's uh, reposting, which says the same look I give my kids when they say something absolutely effing stupid. Kind of disturbing to know any of these people have kids. But once again, as with Jenny, it's just more liberal supporters who clearly come from a place of privilege. They see Trudeau's rich kid trust fund baby look of arrogance and condescension and see it as a gaze of wisdom. It's too bad not enough people out there are seeing this side of Justin Trudeau. I was put on this planet to do this. This is, this is, I, I fight and I win. It's, it's what, I, what I'm good at. No, you fight from a good place. By the way, uh, just a little fun fact about our friend Larry Dallas here. He embodies the violator of ladies who shrouds himself in the clothing of a male feminist. Just check out this tweet. Anna is running down my country and living off hard work and my taxes. I will call her a B word and you will have to deal with that. If I get real angry, I will call her a see you next Tuesday. She is what she is. She can get the F out too. This really does embody liberal hypocrisy at its its finest. That party that labels itself the champion of women's rights. And immigrant rights too. All the while, this is what's actually in their hearts and minds. So let's take a look at the next shill on our list. Barney here says, you're in the 40% tax bracket and you're struggling to make ends meet in Sault Ste. Marie? Well, wait a second here. You look an awful lot like that Jeff Ballingall fella I keep hearing about. And why does that lunch cooler bag still have a price tag on it? 
No one knows what this tool's talking about with regards to the price tag on the lunchbox. But what I can tell you is I'm glad he brought up Jeff Bellingall because that feeds right into the next part of this review that we're doing of these liberal shills. But before we get into that, let's take a quick look. I mean, let's look at what these liberal mathematicians who think their numbers are what define everyone else's economic reality. Here's a quick rough breakdown of what self-sufficient adults who aren't supported by their mommies and daddies have to cover. Now let's say red shirt guy does actually bring in a gross income of 100 grand a year. In Ontario, that tax bracket would bring you down to 78,000 and change. So yeah, that's not 40%, but that's not the point. We'll get to that a little later on, but let's take a quick look. I, I went through Kijiji and other sources and the average monthly rent mortgage that it would take to house a family of six, the guy said he has four kids, so that's six people, that would be roughly like 2,600 a month. So as you can see, he has a uh, net income of $6,528 a month. And that doesn't include uh, some of the other things like union dues that'll be deducted from his paycheck. So right off the bat, 2,600, like he's down substantially. Look at his car. I, I don't know this guy's life. I don't know his situation, but you know, let's assume he's still doing car payments. And like I said, he has four kids. So the chances are that A, his wife is probably a stay at home wife. Given his age, she probably has kids at home that she has to stay behind and take care of. So he has support order two. And when you're a family of six, you need two vehicles. So what if the amount of money he has to plow into those cars is $700 monthly, right? For two cars, two car payments. I think that's, you know, pretty fair, $700 a month. And let's say that both of the cars come out to $250 a month. That's another, like that's almost another thousand dollars down, right? So that would be 3,600. And now coming from his $6,500 income, he's really going down fast. I won't even get started on gas and stats can itself states it costs an average of $17,235 a year to raise a kid. He's got four of them. So right there, that breaks down to $5,700 a month just to support the kids. And I'm not even running all of his monthly expenses and he's already in the deficit, but I digress. So so let's move on to Jeff Ballingall, who was mentioned in that tweet. Just a quick rundown on Jeff Ballingall. He runs a media agency that has been hired by the conservative party in the past to create media for them. Okay. So there's a biased part of the liberals, but there was a contingent of knuckle draggers who felt a need to go beyond the petty attacks who just went through an attempt to slander red shirt guy. And the most prominent post came from crazy Canuck. And you could check out her tweet right here. The irate employee in the video refusing a donut from prime minister, Justin Trudeau and trash talking to him is James Oakley, leader of mobilized media storytellers who try to influence public opinion and rally change. Connect the dots, folks. He was a plant. By leading the charge with this post, she set off the monkey squad and they all proceeded to attack not only Red Shirt Guy, but a couple of people who had nothing to do with the incident. They accused Jeff Ballingall of being Red Shirt Guy himself, but couldn't even get that lie straight as they posted a picture of Jeff's employees under Jeff's name. On and on it went with these liberals pointing the finger at two men with no involvement in the situation. It got bad. And you know it's bad when a professional dirtbag like Dean Blundell even gets it right. And even after the local Sault Ste. Marie paper and community notes on X proved these liberal lunatics wrong, Crazy Canuck held to her very obvious lie. Y'all are triggered. The social experiment work. Thanks. Until next time, over 438,000 views from a teeny tiny account. Back to my ironing and crochet. So tell me again how it's the right that are cold, cruel, and small. How is it that it's the right that are the ones behind all the hate and animosity on social media? As mentioned, I'm now going to replay the video of the exchange between Red Shirt Guy and Trudeau in the event you missed it. Enjoy. We're going to take a look at a back and forth that was captured by CTV when Justin Trudeau stopped into Sault Ste. Marie and offered free donuts to steelworkers as they filed into work. What sets this confrontation apart from most others is that the man challenging Trudeau is in no way offensive. He doesn't use any foul language, doesn't hurl any insults, and keeps a respectful tone throughout the discussion. Let's have a look. First thing that jumps out is how Trudeau just plows right into handshake mode. If you really watch carefully, you'll see the main steel worker back away from Trudeau as he goes in for the handshake.
Looks like Trudeau even tries to ignore him at first as the steel worker is trying to say something to him and Trudeau just keeps on shaking those hands like a madman but he can't avoid that steel worker because he's staying close to the other workers. Trudeau announces there are plenty of free donuts to which the gentleman quips that maybe he can bring some home to his kids. Well, we got we got donuts over here if you want to, to thank you for your hard work. I, I can we, bring some for my kids here. Okay. Uh, the twenty five percent tariffs we just brought in on Chinese steel is yep. going to help you out. That's going to keep my job. Yeah. What about the the four hundred uh, forty percent taxes I'm paying, and and I don't have doctor. The four hundred million dollars in the yeah. invested investment uh, card. Yeah. He brings up that he doesn't have a family doctor, but unfortunately, he brings that up at the exact same time that he asks Trudeau a financial question. So while that is a great question, Trudeau is forced to pick one or the other, and that statement about his doctor unfortunately goes unanswered. You're have a job awesome. for I think many, you're only here for another year. We won't see you around probably another year. Well, I, guess. I love it. We're only going to have you around for another year. By now, Trudeau is quite accustomed to meeting with people who don't like him, but I don't think he was anticipating this. What I love is there's nothing rude or abrasive about this steelworker. Just pure straight talk, which is complete and total kryptonite to Justin Trudeau. If you watch him carefully in other footage, you'll see Trudeau is always taken aback by polite contention. So if you ever do run into him, don't go low and give him a chance to go high. Be like this steelworker that you see here. Just be polite, be straight to the point, and you'll completely throw him off by doing so. so that's what elections yeah. are for. So that's right, that's right. And I, I, I look forward to everyone exercising the right to vote. Yep. And the basic choice, we're going to invest in you and your job. I don't, I don't believe you for a second. Like I said, delivery and tone are everything and we're so accustomed to watching Trudeau opponents scolding him, yelling obscenities at him, and in some cases, making themselves look worse than the Prime Minister. Definitely not the case here. Once again, I love the fact that he called Trudeau a liar without actually saying it. Uh, dental care? Do you know anyone who got dental care? Yeah, I pay for it myself. Okay. We're like three years behind. The dental care program was never a liberal initiative to begin with. We all know this. It was a concession rolled out to appease the NDP to avert an early election. That's what makes things so weird and awkward when the liberals try to bring it up. It just comes across as so forced and lacking any and all authenticity. Coverage. Yeah, uh, four, but we four got people seniors. in my family. Got Every seniors. time we go for a dental visit, mm -hmm. it's costing me about $50 in my pocket per mm -hmm. person. Okay. Why? I have a good job. You're not really doing anything for us, Justin. Well, actually, we, we, we just invested so half a million people who haven't been to the dentist. Yeah. Got to go to the dentist over the past few months. Probably like my neighbor that doesn't go to work because she's lazy. Well, she you know doesn't go to work. She lives the same Most way. Most Canadians try to stick up for each other. Wrong answer, Justin. This. This right here is one of the most telling parts of the video. It might not look like it on the surface, but I'll do my best to explain. Justin Trudeau is a champagne socialist. He was raised with money and never had to contend with any of the concerns faced by our steelworker over here. He never had to worry about his paycheck not being able to cover his family's needs. He's never experienced what it's like to fall behind on your finances despite putting in long, hard hours on the job. So when a hardworking Canadian is struggling despite doing everything that's expected of him in our society and they see someone putting in no effort and yet getting a better living than they do, they feel like chumps. And rich kid Justin's outlook on the steelworker's lazy neighbor is he defaults to defending her. And this goes to explain why Trudeau keeps failing and slumping in the polls. He just can't wrap his mind around the concept of a meritocracy. That's what we're going to keep doing. Yeah. Good yeah. luck and take care of your family, oh, sir. No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Have a nice day. Have a good day, sir. Good night. Wait, the other guys got they got the donuts excellent well the other guys they've got the donuts yay free donuts probably from an unsanitary tim horton staffed by temporary foreign workers this video isn't even a full minute and a half long and it perfectly summarizes trudeau's reign well with that i thank you guys for watching and if you haven't done so already please consider subscribing especially with the video i've got coming up soon on reddit and the negative impact it now has on our politics I'll see you guys in the next one.